Hi, my name is Fabrizia Varela, manager of the international department at CATCA. I oversee seven countries in Central and South America. Uh, they are Costa Rica, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina. Uh, today, I'm going to be focusing more in Ecuador. Uh, we have two collisions in the canton of Duran. This is located in the province of Guayas in Ecuador. So one of the collision I started working with them on September the last year, the name is Derecho de los Pobres. Uh, this was really uh, challenging as uh, at that time due to the pandemic, the collision was inactive. So, and we did not have any coordinator at the time. So we ended up kind of having to restart, reactivate the collision, doing all the work pretty much virtually. Just uh, even over the phone, we had a great, great help for our wonderful trainer, Eda Perez. Uh, we have a strategy to call each of the collisioner that we had contact with and restructure and reactivate it. The effort was really wonderful. Now we do have, uh, they have 20 active members. They are working with youth. Uh, that they are working in the coalition and that now we are focusing and bringing even more uh, youth to work in there. They already select their board director, director, they already finalized the bylaw, they have two work committees. They have 10 sectors that are represented. Even before the pandemic, they were able to do their community assessment. They had interactive workshop where they did create the mapping risk areas they also decided to interview uh, three key people. They apply uh, 117 surveys to the neighborhood, and they also had some focus group with uh, approximately 50 youth. Now, the result that they obtained was that 81.20% uh, indicated that the substance that it was consumed the most in the area was the age. The age is uh, kind of a, let's say it's a substance that is prevents from the heroin. It's a 5% mix between heroin with cocktails or any other substance that they could go even from brick dolls to rat poison. So that's a really big issue that is uh, presenting in the country. So after this, they came up and they, they created the logic model where the risk factor, there was the access and availability and the community norms and use based on the problem that they identified that the consumption of the age in, in teens from 13 to 18 years old in the area of the derecho, derecho de los pobres. Now the location, when what they determined that the substance was uh, consumed and also was sold in their park. Uh, so after that, they decided to work on this strategy, on the seven strategy. They created uh, different type of activities to take over uh, pretty much to change that area where they determined that was the high um, consumption issue. Uh, for example, we'd say that they provide information. They were doing door to door brochures and um, they also just to kind of give a message of what uh, are the um, uh, the cause of the damage that will have to the body if they consume this type of substance. They also talk to parents. They also create, talk to even create preventions and family communication, me mental health activities in the park. They worked also in enhancing the skills as they were preparing the kids and adolescents with prevention messages. They also provide support to the community. And um, then regarding the enhancement on um, the barrier reduction, they created community cinemas in the park. They also work a lot with the kids, creating theatrical plays uh, regarding prevention and sport activities. And another t uh, strategy that they were doing is the, to change the consequence that was creating drawing content with the kids where they will provide a, a, a prize to the winning children that was related to the prevention. 
all this uh, also um, they paint um, a, a, a mural in the park to just to kind of bring the attention to the prevention in the area. And they're also creating uh, different regulations to how the community can use the park. All this brought attention to the INL in Ecuador as they went to visit them and on, on June of this year. That just created a really big attention through the whole uh, country. And now they have been uh, more involved as we already have contact with the government of Ecuador. And we also have a external conversation with the police in the country to see how we can bring this concept of community coalition to a higher level. In addition to that, we have uh, the visit of the uh, Ms. Heidi Fulton, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the INL. She went there on August 25th and she was really pleased to see this, how all these communities working together. INL now, we, we're having more um, connections pretty much with the countries where they are embassy represented working in there, INL representative in the country. So we, we kind of had some meetings with the um, Ecuador uh, INL office, a representative, uh, let's say her name is Maria Angeles Samarraga. So I guess that as we have been updating her with everything that we have done and all the progress that she has seen in the in the community, how this community have working, you know, together against this uh, big issue that they're having, uh, they just catch their attention to see how active they are, and they decided to um, to bring the director, uh, INL director in USA, to to see what the progress of the coalition, what they have been doing, how they're working in there. So we ended up, ended up organizing. They went there, I believe that was for around an hour, hour and a half. So the whole commu the community got together. So they also invited the El Requero Tres. So both uh, coalitioners were in El Derecho de los Pobres. So it was really interesting. They also invited the police. They have the, also the press, the TV coming on. So they presented pretty much all the activities that I was telling you about, the seven strategy, how they have been reaching out to the community, all the activities they have done. They just presented to them, just explaining everything that they have they are been doing. They also created different events as per uh, theater kind of uh, from youth, you know, theater talking about prevention. They have another uh, music, you know, things like that. So they could see how they are uh, working within the in the park and, and the activities that they are doing. And they were really pleased. Uh, they were really excited to see how many people were in there. It was around 150 kids, of course. Even though you know we we, we were having uh, they're still having the, the pandemic, where they tried to make sure that everything was covered as per everybody was wearing masks, they have certain distance. So that was um, something that we really wanted to make sure that the prevention part was always present in there. And after that, um, as I said before, because there was a TV, so it just. It just came up to see kind of big and unfortunately Ecuador is, is going through a, a really tough situation as a security in, in, regarding security and drugs. So it, it, it seems to be a priority now, this kind of a number one priority for the country to be focusing on kind of um, working and get against this issue. And this community coalitions uh, that has been really, you know, bringing that attention to it. Uh, now, uh, we would say that Ecuador is one of the pioneer country as also this has been the first country that we open up a new coalition in there 100% virtually. We haven't been there at all. So we, after um, working directly with our coordinator that we finally kind of identified the economist Natalie Jahara, is she helped us to create and, and check um, through and going through different type of criteria that we already have defined. She went out there 
selected around three uh, communities. And after that, we just, uh, uh, based on the scales and, and the process that we already have assigned, we decided to, to work in the El Recreo 3. So we started on April, 2021. Uh, and as for now that we are already in September, they already have 18 coalition members. They have, they already created the work committee. They have uh, 11 sectors represented and they have regular meetings um, uh, in person and also uh, virtual. Uh, at this point, this coalition is focused pretty much on the diagnosis. Uh, they already did the, the map, the, the risky area, so they know where exactly are having the issues. They created, um, they applied 271 surveys. 171 surveys were in person and 100 of them were in uh, done through Google. So this show us in an amazing way how even though the challenging time that we're going through, through uh, with the pandemic is still is allowing us when the, this community comes together to still work and get the work done. Um, remember that one of the, I guess what makes big difference is that all this a coalition are volunteer, 100% volunteer, and they just are together because they want to make a big change in their community.